Now for the next tutorial, we're going to retrieve a different data set. We need to download uh, an Excel file from this link. We're just going to click the link. Once the Excel file is downloaded, we're going to click the import data and we're going to follow the steps uh, within the wizard itself. So we click my computer. Then we're going to find downloads. Once we find downloads, if you downloaded the file recently, I find it easy, easiest to click last modified and it will sort the files according to the date. As you can see, Titanic plus data is right here and we're going to select it. Then click next. So our Excel file contains only one sheet, which is called Titanic 3. Cell range is from A to L. That encompasses all data within this document. The find header row is checked and it only selects the first row, which is correct for this data set. Click next. We're going to see here that RapidMiner recognized what type of data we are dealing with. The survived uh, attribute is polynomial, so it's a word. So it's yes or no. We can turn it into binary, which is one or zeros. Uh, but it recognized all of the data. It didn't have any trouble with it. And as we can see here, it says no problems were found and we have a green check mark. That means we can click next and we don't have to do any editing at this point. We just need to store the data and I'm going to store it into our data folder right here. And we're going to call it Titanic plus data one. Once we completed an import of data, we are shown the results of that import. Now we're going to go back to the design view. As the tutorial says, go back to the design view and drag the imported data set. As I imported this data set a couple of times, I'm going to just pick one of them. Next step is to connect the output to the result. And there's two ways to do it. As the tutorial says, you can either drag and drop as I did it, or just click, drag, click. This can be useful if you have the data set far away. So let's say it's all the way down here. Now you can click, scroll up, come to the results section. And as you can see, I need to scroll even to the right and then click. And this will also work. There's no need to put our pieces right in the outline sections, but it's just easier to follow like that. If we click next, the finishing part of the tutorial just includes us running this and seeing that it works. So it doesn't matter where you put tab of data, it only matters that you connect it correctly to the result node. And finally, we have some challenges. You can see the data in the results. Can you find out how missing values are shown? If we go to our results, actually, we have to run this again, since I closed all the results. Now we're going to see that we have 1309 examples. If we click here, this filter shows us all the data. Now if we click on no missing attributes, we're going to see that our data set now shows only 180 rows of 1309. What this means is that these rows that we're showing right now have no missing attributes. They're filled out with every attribute and it's listed. If we click on missing attributes, however, we're going to see that there are some question marks which represent null values and unknown values. We can see that most of our data set contains well, most of our rows in, in the data set contain some missing values from all of our attributes. That's the first question done. That's how we show it. The statistics tab shows summaries of the data in the columns. How many people did travel in first class and how many people did not survive the Titanic accident? If we go on to the statistic tab, you're going to see every attribute listed here. And this tab is very powerful when it comes to answering questions like these. If we go ahead and open passenger class and then open visualization, we can see that the first class had 323 passengers. Now the next question asks how many people died in the Titanic crash? We're going to go ahead and open the survived, open visualization, but we can already see without opening it that 809 people died. Play around with some of the charts if you like. Can you see some interesting patterns? Now if we go ahead and and choose another uh, way to chart data. Uh, we can maybe make a scatter pattern that will show our age on the x axis and our value. We can we can go ahead and click, let's say, the passenger fare. Now this graph can show us 
how the age of the passenger affects the price of their tickets. So the younger passengers have cheaper tickets. Maybe it's uh, a ticket for a child, maybe it's a discounted one, with the most expensive tickets being held by 35-year-olds, 36-year-olds, and a 58-year-old. And we can see that the 80-year-olds have also very cheap tickets. That's how we can learn from our data. We can generate much more uh, of these charts, and I'll go into details on charts in a separate video. I'm going to see you in the fourth one.